Hello and welcome back to part 2 of my home server build. And what's in this conspicuous looking box? Hmm, let's get in there. Get this bit of sponge off the way. Oh look! Looks like 10 hard drives. And it is. 10 3 terabyte drives, which will go nicely into my server. They're not SATA drives, they are SAS drives, as you can see from the connector on the rear. Let's put them back in there. Right, let's get this box out of the way, because we don't need these yet. We're going to look at what, what these drives are plugged into, which we've got just next to this box. Move them out the way. This is our SAS control card. It's an IBM Server Raid M1015. It does 6 gigabits per second. It's a PCIe control card. And these are our mini SAS 36 pin SFF8087 to 29 pin SFF8482 with a 15 pin SATA power connector. Righty then, let's get these drives mounted into the rack and we can get them installed into our server. Right, that's our drives nice and securely mounted into the rack. This is the interesting part now where we get to install the SAS control card and have a little play with it. I'm just going to install a couple of vented blanks into the back here which I had spare from another chassis and they fit perfectly well in this 4U rack server chassis. Last one here now and we're done. 
Now we're going to install the drives and we can then get them all wired up and then we can fire this up and see how, uh, see how everything operates. These are our special mini SAS 36 pin SFF8087 cables to four SAS 29 pin SSF8482 cables with a 15 pin SATA power connector as well. First time I've ever used these type of cable, um, I had to do a bit of reading to understand how I was to connect the control card to the drives. First the 36 pin SSF8087 side goes into the control card and just the one connector enables us to connect four SAS drives. As you can see I'm installing one SAS drive into a completely separate caddy from the other five drives. This is going to be complemented with an SSD. This disc is going to be our parity disc. Parity is a calculated value that's used to restore data from other drives if one of the drives in the set fails. It determines the number of odd and even bits in a number and this information is used to reconstruct data if a sequence of numbers is lost which is the case if one of the disc fails. I must admit, it is quite nice to have that additional security for your data. And that's our parity disk installed and now it's time to install our SSD which is going to be used as our cache drive. A disk cache is a mechanism for improving the time it takes to read from or write to a hard disk. A disk cache can also be a specified portion of random access memory or RAM. The disk cache holds data that has recently been read and in some cases adjacent data areas that are likely to be accessed next. Now that we've got our parity disk installed and our cache disk, we can now install the rack into the server case. Time to wire them in. Disc 5 and the parity disc will be run off the second port on the SAS controller. The SAS controller can support up to 8 devices. The cache disk is going to be the only disk that's connected to the SATA controller. Right, so now all our disks are connected 
and all got power to them. I must admit I've had to use some splitter cables to be able to make this possible. We can start messing around now with the more complicated part of the process which is to flash our task controller card from IR mode to IT mode. Basically what it means is IR mode is independent RAID mode which the card itself will control how the drives are merged together and how the array is controlled but because we're going to be using unraid on the server we need it to be in it mode which allows unraid the software to independently address each of the disks right so as i had no idea what i was doing when it comes to flashing a sas control card as i've not done it before and um, it seemed to me to be fairly straightforward it'd be exactly the same as flashing a bias on a motherboard I just had a little look on Google and searched for my SAS control card and come across this website servethehome.com and it basically gives you a step by step instruction of how to do what needs to be done to get the card into IR mode. This website seems pretty detailed because it gives you all the information on how to convert the card from IR mode to IT mode or IT mode back to IR mode. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're going to be cross flashing my IBM M1015 card to an LSI 9211. I just followed the instructions for my controller card under the section where it says convert LSI 9240 and in brackets IBM M1015 to an LSI 9211-IT mode. It does say that your link to the files is broken but if you right click on it and click save to disk they do download and they do work so clearly the the link must have been fixed. I'll put that link up on screen so that if anyone needs it they can go directly to it. Unfortunately I didn't screen record this section of the process where I was flashing my card from IR mode to IT mode. There's just screenshots of various parts of the process which I've put together in a little compilation there. But in the end it worked and we got the job done. And this is what it looks like when we boot up the server now. My on RAID server will be booting off a USB pen that's installed internally on one of the USB headers. I bought a little adapter which adapts the USB header on the motherboard to a USB socket to install a USB pen drive. That way we don't have to use any more power connectors or cables or anything and we can maximise the amount of disks that we can be used for storage in the server. I probably could squeeze another two discs in there but limited by the amount of power connectors that I've got. The PSU I'm using is a modular power supply but I did struggle finding the cables for this actual power supply that would give me an additional say four SATA power connectors. Either way it's three times the amount of storage that I had on my Seagate personal cloud which was five terabytes. Now let's boot this beauty up and we can show you what our raid server looks like now it's all set up and running. One of the main reasons, as I stated possibly in my last video, I'm not sure, for using Unraid as the software for the server is because I would like to use GPU pass through at some point in the future. I also tend to use it as my render server as well at the same time. You can have multiple VMs running on the system as well. And you can just use VNC to VNC into it, which is pretty useful. It takes quite a lot of workload off my main rig gives me the options to be able to play games whilst rendering on the server downstairs plus it's it's much faster than my current rig and that's primarily because there's 24 cores running on the server right so unraid runs completely headless and to access the server we have to use the web GUI. as you can see we've got our six new devices attached and I had been using it with just a one terabyte drive in it just for test purposes. So we're gonna stop the, uh, we're gonna take the array offline now by stopping it. So to get started, we need to go to tools and we need to set up a new configuration. So we just wanna, we wanna preserve just our uh, pool slots and then that will remove everything else. So now when we go back to main, it should have a completely empty setup. 
So we can assign our six new devices. What I'd done to assign the devices was I actually took the serial numbers from each drive in the actual configuration that they were installed into the system so that they would go from left to right and that way I would know which drive was which. This obviously makes it more simple if I need to remove a drive or replace a drive I'll know exactly which drive is which. Right, so now that all our drives are assigned, we can now start the array. And we get some error messages now saying that the array has reported read errors. Um, this basically boiled down to a dodgy power cable, which I then discovered later on after a bit of messing about. start formatting the array and we also get an unraid parity sync error and that's because no parity has actually been set up yet on, on my array. Right, to sort our parity out we have to go into the settings here and we can then enable a daily parity check. It might actually change this to once on a Sunday. It says parity is degraded, one invalid device, and that's just because it hasn't done a parity check yet. Disk is still formatting. Once the drives have been formatted, we can then set up some shares. So we'll just add a simple share named share. Just having a look at the allocation method. High water uses the lowest number of disks with free space, but yeah. Well, if high water is to write as much data as possible to each disk in order to manage. Yeah, so we want the data to be distributed evenly across the array, which is what we want. Yep, so I'm happy with that. So we can then add this here. Done. And so after quite some time, the uh, the parity synced the data. It took 14 hours, 34 minutes, and I've transferred everything off my Seagate personal cloud to my network now. And that's it, my save is complete. Please join me in my next video where we'll use Unraid to set up a virtual machine, and then we'll render a video using that virtual machine. This is particularly useful as I'll be able to continue gaming on my main rig whilst rendering videos at the same time. Any comments please leave down below, and thanks for watching this video.